Previously, I've not shown you a property that we've started from scratch converting into a HMO. You may have seen some of the finished, amazing HMOs that we've created, but in this particular project, I want to show you from the early stages, the last time we were here, we were stripped right down to the bone, and now we're putting it back together. I want to show you some of the key things that we're doing in this house. If you're watching for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain, and on this channel, we have three videos a week where I share my 15 years of property investing experience with you to ultimately help you get further faster in your property investing journey. The last time we were at this particular property, it stripped straight out, it was all back to bones, a skeleton, and now, as I was saying earlier on, we're just starting to put that back together, and I wanna take you up to the attic room first because that's where we're doing some extensive works. When we originally took this property on, it was already an existing six bedroom HMO, but we've now stripped it right back to brick to its bare bones so that we can recreate and redesign the space. When these houses were originally built about a hundred years ago, they were suitable for that purpose at that moment in time. Right now, for what we're using these properties for, they're really, the shape is there, the volume is there, but the layout really isn't great. So it's about creating a design which is much more desirable, much more contemporary. So this is our attic room. Originally, there was like a dingy room here this is a fairly tired HMO and as you can see we're doing extensive works here and spending quite a bit of money and now sometimes it may feel a little bit crazy that you know these houses are expensive enough to buy as it is and then we're spending a significant amount on top of that that's quite a lot of capital outlay that we're starting with but the reason we can do that is because we'll create an amazing space which means that the rent that we create will be a high rent and ultimately the commercial value of this will be much, much higher than we've started with. And that will be the end goal. So a high capital value that we'll end up with, we'll refinance the property, most of the investment will come back out and we'll have a very good income and cash flow from this particular uh, house. So here, what we had previously is really space that wasn't used very well. It's because the floor wasn't really designed for attic space. So what we've done, we've stripped it all back and apart from the four walls and the roof, in this building everything else will be effective like a brand new house and here now it will be much bigger much more desirable the layout will work so much better the floor space will be better and we'll have a number of windows within the attic space here as well so it's much more light much more airy and as i said this will be our penthouse suite for this particular property now what this means is that when we look at the layout of a, of a house like this we can start with just what the boundaries are and how we can reconfigure that to really work for shared accommodation because it's a case of we want to work out where the bed's going to go where we'll have a sofa where we'll have the tv for them where the bathroom's going to work really well for this uh, particular room and also the rest of the layout where the kitchen's going to be best suited in this house if you've watched some of our previous videos you'll see we don't even always put the kitchen at the back of the house sometimes it might be in the first floor that will have the kitchen it's about how we can utilize every single inch in that house to make it much more desirable than it currently is right now This is the room just below the attic we were in a few moments ago. Here you can see we've got very high ceilings. Now in some houses what we will do when we fit a new uh, floor in we might lower the ceiling slightly because we want to create more head height in the room above. But clearly where we were previously there's enough space up there so it means we don't necessarily need to mess about with the height. Now when we're redesigning these properties what we want to look at is how is it we're really going to be able to utilize the space the best way we possibly can. Often when people are working in these old houses, they'll cut corners, they'll try and just work with what's already there. Where really, when you're doing a huge refurb like this, you can redesign many parts of the property. So it just works much nicer. For instance, the chimneys are all being removed from this property as well. You can see here where the chimney's been removed from, where the original chimney breast was. In fact, you can still see signs of the smoke. There's probably about 100 years of smoke on this wall here. But when you're refurbishing a house like this, the way I think about it, we're not doing a, uh, a restoration here. What we're doing is a renovation, which means we're modernizing it, we're making it much nicer. Now, don't get me wrong, on an old house like this, if we were doing a restoration, we might wanna keep those original features. But today, when's the last time you saw an open fire in a bedroom? It just doesn't exist, it doesn't make sense. It's not really for today's living. And you see people cut corners, what they'll do, they'll leave the chimney breast there and then they try and fit the ensuite in the corner and they've got to cram it in that space that we have. I want to have nice big showers, nice modern bathrooms and the way we can create that is not by restricting 
with what's already here and by taking this out yes it costs a little bit more a few hundred pounds more a thousand pounds more here and there and of course it does add to the budget but ultimately it goes towards creating stunning spaces and desirable spaces which is really important because that's what's going to get you the rent and that's what's going to achieve the higher value that we want to and you know although these features are uh, sometimes seen in some houses really they're almost in the way they're not really serving a purpose you know what, what do people use these fireplaces now they might you know put your birthday cards there you can still have a little shelf or something there that you know means you can place your ornaments there but the space is now much more open and means we can use it in the best possible way come on through. This particular room is designed for very slim people. So clearly it's not going to work for me because I've been working out in the gym and I can't actually get through here. Joking apart, this is another example of how the design changes can be uh, ones that will be much more practical than they are right now. So yes, so essentially what we're doing here, we're closing up the doorway to move it across slightly so we, we will have a normal size door opening. But the cost we're going through, just moving the door even by a few inches can be quite a bit. But this is what we're prepared to do to make the design work much better than it already is right now. In fact, one of the very few things we're probably not changing in this house is the original staircase. It's more than adequate, it serves a purpose and it also leaves a nice little bit of feature from what was there originally, the spindles that were here when the house was built. That's probably one of the very few things that we were going to keep that was here when the house was built originally. Let me now show you something outside, some rectification work that we're doing. Some previously, there's been probably a number of people that worked on this property, probably a few cowboys in the past as well. Let me show you some of the work that they've done that we're rectifying uh, right now. Just mind your step as you're coming through. Builder's cup of tea. Before I show you why I brought you out here, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel as well. Enable the notification bell, that means you get notified when we release these videos because remember there's three videos a week for you to enjoy. Now here at some point this was built as an extension on the property and as I said there's probably some maybe let's say not very experienced people may have worked on this property in the past and essentially what they did um, when they finished the work when we took the property on there was a lot of damp on the inside of this property and damp one of those problems is you really need to get to the source of it to resolve it sometimes you see people patch over damp problems but that doesn't resolve the source of the problem and essentially what had happened here is that they had a lot of rubble from the work that they'd done here and they just filled it up and raised the floor so the one behind me is lower and it's higher over here because essentially it's all rubble and they after the rubble they just put some slabs down and hey presto it looks nice but what happened is now that we're there above the damp line and what that meant was that uh, the water was seeping through on the inside of the property and essentially we had rising damp on the property. So when we're doing a job like this, clearly we want to get to the bottom of all these problems. We really don't want to have any damp problems in the future. So we're going to strip it right down, clear all this out and rectify and make sure it's done correctly so that for the next hundred years, this house is going to run without any problems. Whilst we're at the back of the property, you'll see some of the positioning of the windows and doors has been moved. It's really about making it work better for what we want to do. And some of the new windows are starting to go in on the first floor uh, and the second floor uh, as well. Now, the other thing that I want to show you, if you look across that property over there, you'll see there's a nice big dormer being built out on that top floor. But why is it we've not built a dormer here? You may have seen some other projects that we're doing where we have built a dormer. And it's really thinking about what's practical, what's viable and what's cost effective. 
because yes, there's so many things you could do here, but what is it gonna be viable for us to do at the end of the day? Now, if we did build a huge dorm at the back here, what that would have meant was we either got a very big room upstairs, which we already have as it is anyway, or we could have created two rooms, but hey, we don't have permission to, to do that in terms of the number of people we have in the property, and we have just ended up with smaller rooms. Essentially, what that means, we wouldn't really add any value to the property, so there's really no point spending that significant amount of money there. So yes, we do spend lots of money on doing things, but also things that add value rather than doing it just for the sake of doing it. So I hope you're enjoying this content. I just want to say thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next video.